dozen years or so after he left us. The spirit, the comforter, the parakletos moved me to write these words. We knew that there was something better now. A new covenant. But here we were, Hebrews, with every aspect of our lives ruled. What we could eat, what we could wear, how far we could walk on the Sabbath, when the Sabbath began. And so there came this letter. It took me a very long time before I could learn to write these words. Jacob, Jacob, James, the slave of Yahweh and of the Lord, Yeshua Mashiach, the Adonai, the Master, Jesus Christ. To the Hebrews in the dispersion, and we were dispersed. Rome was chasing us. The Jews from the temple were chase chasing us, persecuting us, taking us captive. We were dri being driven throughout the world. Hebrews in the dispersion, greeting. My brothers, for so this book is written to those who believe. My brothers, count it joy. Count it pure joy when you are surrounded by many trials. Knowing that the proving of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance work toward completion. This word, endurance, you have a word. It is called uh, patience. It means you do not like to wait in a line. That is not this word. This word means to bear up. It is, it is a word used of someone carrying a heavy load upon their back. It is the word used of Yeshua when he came and walked among us. He endured us. He bore up to be with us. And so should he not. To come from heaven, a place of perfect beauty, without sin, to walk among the likes of us with our pride, our anger, our jealousy, our bitterness. He endured. And so should we. Let endurance, let bearing up have its completing work, that you may be complete and mature, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of the one God, giving to all men unreservedly, not reproaching. It will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing doubting. For the one doubting is like a wave of the sea being driven by the wind and being tossed. Let not, not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. A man two-souled is unsettled in all the ways of him. A man whose innermost being is divided. He wishes to hold on to the things of Yahweh and the things of the cosmos, the world, that which is in opposition to Yahweh. He is a man two-souled. He is divided in his innermost being. A man two-souled is unsettled in all the ways of him. But let the humble brother boast in the height of him. And the rich one in the humiliation of him, because as a flower of grass, he will pass away. The sun rose with a fervent heat, and it dried the grass. The flower of it fell out, and the beauty of its appearance died. Thus also the rich man in his goings will fade away. Blessed is the man who endures trials, because having become proved, he will receive the crown of life, which he promised to the ones loving him. Let no man say, from God I am tempted. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt any man. But each man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. And lust, having conceived, bears sin. The child of lust is sin. And sin having been fully formed, brings forth death. This word sin, it is such a small word to cause so much difficulty. It means to miss the mark. It is the word used of the archer when he takes the arrow and lets it fly toward the target and it strikes the target, but not exactly in the center. 
Not hitting the target exactly in the center is sin. But the target is Yahweh's target. It is very small. And only one who ever walked this earth has ever had a life that struck the target exactly in the center, a life without sin. Yeshua, Mashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. That was always a difficult thing for us growing up with him. <laughs> Something would happen. Our mother would call out, who did that? Yeshua, Jesus. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> Indeed, it was not easy growing up with a brother who was truly perfect. Now, I know some of you think you have brothers who grow up with a brother who was truly perfect. But <laughs> Sin having been fully formed, brings forth death. The child of sin is death. Do not wander away, my beloved brothers. Every good and complete gift is from above and is coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, with whom there is no place for change or shifting shadow. Having purposed, he brought us forth. He brought us forth with a purpose. We are here for a purpose. We are not an accident. Through the mind of the Almighty One, the Lord God Almighty, we were brought forth. We were brought forth with a purpose. Having purposed, He brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a certain first fruits of His creatures. No, my beloved brothers. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Let me say that to you again. The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. So put away all filthiness and abundant evil, and in meekness, in meekness, receive the implanted word of God, able to save your souls. Become doers of the word, not hearers only, misleading yourselves. Because if anyone hears the word and does not do what it says, he's like a man perceiving the face of his birth in a mirror. For he perceives himself and went away and immediately forgot what sort he was. This word here, man, do you know what it means? It means a man. Not mankind, but a man. You see... When a woman looks at her face in a polished piece of bronze or, or in the water, she looks at her face and she remembers what she sees.